Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Today, I'm excited to talk to you guys about a project that I'm kind of unveiling here. I'm lifting the lid on this project, so I'm very excited to tell you about the headphone that we're making. Um, now, over the coming months, I aim to give more regular updates on this project um, and you know, talk to you guys about how things are progressing. It turns out that making a headphone from the ground up is an extremely time-consuming process. And while I've already put in countless hours into this project, I expect I'll still be working on this for a while. But in today's video, I mainly wanted to talk about why we're doing this. The initial reason for doing this is that I wanted to learn more about how headphones work. In this case, we decided to make it a planar magnetic headphone, which has involved challenges that I hadn't anticipated when I first started this earlier on. But I've always been fascinated by how planars work in general, ever since I heard those original Hi-Fi Man and Odyssey planars like the HE6, HE500. You know, I've always wondered what it is about those transducers that makes them so unique and makes them sound the way that they do. So I'm treating this as an opportunity to find out. The next reason for doing this is to create something that sounds great. I've said in the past that there's no such thing as the perfect headphone and that they can always be improved. And that's also why I tend to EQ things, but you know, that's a, that's a different topic. You guys will, we'll talk about that another time. But this is a chance for me to make something suitable for how picky I am when it comes to sound quality. Now beyond the tuning, there's also the question of technicalities or any of the subjective stuff, like you know, what audio files like myself, you know, call detail and, and all that stuff. There's a longstanding mystery surrounding this topic you know, about where some of these subjective reports come from and what they're anchored to acoustically, if anything at all. And while I don't know if I'll have a conclusive answer to that by the end of this, at the very least, I'm approaching this with that question in mind. So, you know, fingers crossed that uh, we'll uncover something new here. Lastly, going through the process of making a headphone is going to make us better at reviewing them. You know, anyone can sit there and criticize headphones for not sounding a certain way or not achieving a desired result. You know, I've seen countless comments like, why didn't they just tune it that way? Um, or why didn't they do it like this? It's not always understood what's possible acoustically or what goes into actually achieving the results that would be desirable. And so the primary goal for me with this project has been to better understand what goes into making a headphone and that's not just to do with the acoustic stuff, but also the more difficult and often unspoken challenges of all the rest of what goes into it. Um, you know, the, all the less talked about aspects of headphones, like how to source the materials that are required or how certain mechanical designs change what's possible acoustically, for example. And since we've been working on this for some time already, you may have already started seeing some of that influence in my reviews. So, you know, the dry and technical stuff is getting even more dry and even more technical, <laughs> potentially. Now, at the moment, we've only got some transducers that we're working on. So there's no actual thing that resembles a headphone yet for me to show you, or at least nothing that I'm ready to show you. Um, you know, actually producing custom designs is extremely difficult and expensive to do. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But at the moment, this process has involved testing custom transducer designs, both objectively and subjectively. And actually, in order to do this, we've been 3D printing the chassis pieces. So let me show you um, as an example. This is kind of what we're working with right now. This has allowed me to listen and evaluate the results of various different transducer iterations. So, you know, here's one transducer in here, but I could theoretically just put another one in there. And then that helps me sort of assess things, um, you know, both by doing measurements and by listening subjectively. Eventually, once we're further along with this project, I hope to have an actual headphone to show you guys, but starting with a suitable transducer is key. So really, this is currently just in the transducer design and development stage, and it'll require a lot more iteration to settle on something that achieves the kind of sound that I'm happy with. And as I mentioned, you know, we've already done a number of iterations, um, as you can see, you know, here. So just so you can see, there are actually custom transducers here. You know, these don't exist anywhere else in a headphone. And actually, it would have been a lot easier to just, you know, pick a transducer that already existed out there and then work with that one. Um, but I figure, you know, the goals here are to learn about this stuff and to better understand kind of what goes into making transducers and designing them and, you know, understand all the various different parameters that kind of go into that. The approach to this has been to control for those various different parameters and make individual changes to see sort of what comes out on top. And I've got a number of specific goals for the transducer in mind, um, and I'll talk about those in an upcoming video um, where I get a little bit more in depth on the specifics of this. But I will say that as of right now, we've already gone through a few of them, like for example, you know, double-sided versus single-sided magnet arrays, um, as well as, you know, different diaphragm materials. Um, and it has yielded some very interesting results, but there's a lot of testing still to do. So I'll have more information about this as we continue to work on it. And eventually I will be sending this out to the various different reviewers on the team, along with a number of other reviewers viewers as well uh, and community members once we're ready. But in any case, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.